Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the World Class Championship Wrestling Review Series, December 13th, 1986 is where we are currently, a few weeks before we enter 1987, and uh, interesting bit of matches here, Master G versus Tony Atlas, uh, Master G of course managed by Percy Pringle, Atlas uh, stepping into that war a bit, war of the full Nelsons early in the contest here. Atlas comes out ahead there. Pringle is dissatisfied with the reception and treatment that his man gets early. And we kind of see that continue throughout the contest. Uh, Tony Atlas with a hip toss and other offensive maneuvers early. Atlas, of course, having been paired with the Dingo Warrior, later Ultimate Warrior, um, they have a friendship budding and potential tag team championship run. Um, Atlas, though, with a headbutt, among other things, deals him out of the corner, and Atlas to the second rope on the inside with a headbutt there. Pringle up on the apron, and uh, Atlas not afraid to bring him into the ring if need be, and need was in fact be, at least at that particular juncture. Uh, this is a shorter show than normal, running less than 38 minutes. Usually they run 42 to 47, so uh, something might have been cut from the program here. Needless to say, uh, Master G gets a good bit of attention for the headbutts on the um, from from Atlas, and Atlas goes for that sleeper that he's been using. I still don't understand the sleeper. Uh, meanwhile, Matt Bourne on the outside uh, hits the bombs away on Tony Atlas, among other things. And Bourne and Master G beat up on Atlas for a few minutes. I mentioned the warrior being his friend. Uh, unfortunately for Tony Atlas, he does not have a friend in the moment as he needs to go and retrieve a steel chair to be the equalizer for himself here. Uh, we move to match number two, the Grappler versus Bruiser Brody. Brody, of course, will face on Christmas night the uh, the wars with Abdullah the Butcher again. Brody here, though, dominant of uh, his uh, adversary, the Grappler, during the early stages of this contest. And cannot believe we're going into another uh, Christmas night spectacular Think about 1982, the Freebirds, and uh, we're, we're, we're uh, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, five years later, and how the mighty have fallen. Uh, anyway, hard shot by Brody to the midsection on the grappler. Brody goes into the front face lock. Always surprising to me when we see Brody, who is uh, typecast as a guy who can only brawl, use wrestling maneuvers. He does manage to get a... Boot to the face and a victory for himself. Then we move to match number three on the uh, on the card. Matches are moving along quite at a quick pace. And this one will too. Killer Tim Brooks against the Dingo Warrior. Brooks is a guy who can, hopefully for himself, slow the Warrior down. Warrior with arm bars and chops in the early stages. Big body slam by the Warrior. A couple more minutes into the match. Misses an elbow drop right after the body slam, which doesn't make very much sense, as that means that uh, there is very little selling, if any, from Killer Brooks. And uh, maybe, you know, wanting to, wanting to put the Warrior over wasn't on his to-want list, to-do list, whatever have you. Anyway, Warrior ducks the clothesline, comes back with a shoulder tackle of his own. One two, and three. Warrior wins with a shoulder tackle, of all things. Uh, match that's up next is Abdullah the Butcher against uh, Mark Youngblood. Youngblood, of course, a guy who I believe has faced the Butcher once before. Butcher again wearing a hood before uh, getting into the, into the chaos of the match. The mask taken off by uh, Gary Hart, and that does not bode well for uh, Youngblood. The referee checks Butcher for 
weaponry doesn't necessarily find any. doesn't mean he doesn't have any. Anyway, Butcher sends him to the outside during the early stages of the match, less than 60 seconds in. As is to be expected, referee loses all control. Gary Hart tries to uh, convince the referee to uh, let things go. Also tries to convince Butcher to behave. Butcher brings him back in. Stands on the man's chest, among other things, and Abdullah the Butcher strongly in control of the cadence and uh, nature of the match. Butcher goes for the next few minutes with uh, shots to the throat, other punches, that inverted sleeper, um, the, the uh, Mark Youngblood tries to fight up from underneath, cannot get the job done. Butcher has a match where he uh, does, I don't believe he bleeds. Anyway, Gary Hart, very, very happy going into Christmas night or the Christmas Spectacular with another Brody and Abdullah match. But his management status in Texas on the line, not particularly a good thing for him. Main event time, Al Madrill, Brian Adias, and Black Bart versus the Von Ericks. Mike, uh, Kevin, and Lance. So, Carrie's still not back yet, but it doesn't seem to matter here. Um, the trio is... The Von Erich trio is still very, very popular in the area, even though they've been through all the stuff they've been through. Kevin, of course, hey, you're on again, off again, world champion. Still don't understand the concept of world champion in this nature, but anyway, vertical suplex by Lance Von Erich, who has a bit of a uh, flat top haircut, a little bit of a different haircut. I'm not sure if that's from an angle in another uh, television program or what that is. Meanwhile, Black Bart finds himself in the wrong corner as he finds himself in the Von Erich corner for the uh, next several minutes of the match. Meanwhile, the heels bailed, bailed out on the outside trying to recover and re regroup. Uh, we see the Von Erichs willing to go to the floor. Al Madrill tries to take some cheap shots at uh, Kevin and uh, cut the ring off on Kevin as the heels take over for the second half of the match. The uh, Von Eriks are obviously uh, very, very happy about their their process, and we see Kevin get three-on-one attacked for a while. Mike and Lance on the other side. Madrill takes the majority of the of the square off. Obviously, the betrayal of Kerry looking to be avenged here. The uh, Madrill-led contingent uh, also. Black Bart, Bart, of course, the man that uh, Kevin had defeated for the World Class Wrestling Association Championship or Alliance Championship, uh, referee having trouble with the uh, heels and does not see the tag. The match breaks down three on one on Kevin and uh, the referee loses all control. The Von Erics eventually do get the victory, but not before a complete Pier 6. Brawl erupts. Von Eric successful here again as we move to the very close to close of 1986 here in World Class. Nothing settled, though, as we, as we move forward.